If you could hit the subscribe button, I do daily videos on so rare, everything from hints, tips and tricks all the way through to live streams and tips on cheap players to buy. That will also automatically enter you into my March giveaway. I'm giving away a rare Davy Klassen who's a midfielder for Ajax and two limited goalkeepers. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Um, maybe like okay, I think the Brazilian striker, the under twenty three guy that I bought, I don't I don't know much about him, and I struggled to find anything out about him as well. That he was like the only guy I could afford that hit reasonable scores that plays a lot, I guess. Um, and uh, then the game that I bought him, he he was out like mysterious illness as well. It wasn't COVID or anything, but I think he's back now. But the defender that I bought, I Aka, yeah, yeah, it's awful. Um, I again look at him and I think I, I I couldn't quite understand why he was so cheap again, especially in the pro division, because he is like the odd anomaly where he's less than 50 points, but he is minimum 50 points, like yeah. 80, 70 percent of his games. And then every now and then gets up in the high 60s, which, you know, is 100 points after the bonuses. It's like that's that's a massive player to just to have, I, I think, anyway. Uh, no, I agree. And again, what what comes into this as well is, like, remember I said to you earlier, like uh, the favourites tab on the auctions and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Again, what, what you need to think about as well when it comes to pricing is how do people find cards, right? So a lot of people will hit all the filters on the market and it will be like under 30, price in this region, price in this league, all that kind of thing. And, you know, if your guy just doesn't have a good Venn diagram on the cross sections of criteria, just not that many people will ever see him you know to then able to actually value them appropriately so that's how these guys can go under the radar just because like people are searching for certain criteria constantly and that's the criteria that always has the the premiums on it so it's try to find those little gaps you know so I, I, I find my players on Surya data i don't know if you do the same it's, I, I'm I just, all over it yeah i, I kind of uh I kind of just found it easier to just go onto Surya data i, I kind of put the all-round average score over like Let's say even just last five, the, you know, the all-round score. I want an all-round score of a minimum of 15. And then decisives don't really care because I, I personally, like my strategy going forward is to pick up players that are just consistent rather than needing needing something to, to make I'm them a, work. I'm a, I'm a little bit the opposite. I love guys that can just bang. <laughs> oh, yeah, fair enough. Um, and then when I hit that, when I hit that uh, search, uh, maybe I should have done... Uh, in the next game week 50 and let's do just it's actually like no not much of a lag between your screen i i, I pulled it up because of the, the tweet notification i got i thought that was at first i thought that was the invite to the call <laughs> oh really <laughs> so I put that up on my screen yeah so i've been able to just catch that which is cool yeah that, um, that's 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 fair enough um yeah, and, then, and then then it gives you the guys and that's where like, like i look at Hottich there and i think he is in a pool of players of insane guys where i'm like how 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 is he so cheap then okay he's 26 doesn't have that u23 utility he's got insane scores he plays all the time yep. he plays for a team that's gonna get into the split and he's one eighth for his super rare he yeah, is in good form isn't he wow i think um, the, the thing you've got with some of these challenger guys in particular is that uh, <laughs> There's a lot of choice and there's a lot of variety, you know, not that exact graph, but there will be, in the challenger region in particular, there'll be a lot of guys that are like competitors in the marketplace. I know you're looking at um, similar players, which is a very useful tool. But what a lot of people will do is they'll filter, they'll do all the kind of stuff you've done. Obviously in SoRare data, it's much more intricate, but on the SoRare market itself, and when you do like, you know, uh, you're looking for a guy with good L15 that's got the next game week, all the rest of it then you don't always get this, you know, you pe different people will get different results by the the fine tweaking of the yeah. different details. Yeah, that's so like, I, do, I, I don't always put too much or very much um, credence into like values on what they, you know, if I'm, you know, once I've bought the guy, if that makes sense, if the price moves up and down, if I've not got, uh, uh, if I've not got, if I've not bought them to deliberately sell them at some point, it's, it doesn't really, I, I don't ever register it as, as movement, to be honest with you, because. Yeah, that's fair um, enough. Because like some guys, when I buy them, like if I'm buying somebody to, to sell, again, like I said earlier, you need to think about the motivation. So if I'm buying a backup goalkeeper to sell a guy when he's a first team keeper, then I'm not going to 
I'm not going to sell him, of course, until that happens. But when that happens, I'm then at the mercy of the pricing. Because so what I would say to myself is I'll decide, right, when he gets two games as the number one, I'll sell him, just to give you some abstract examples. Yeah. Once he gets that second game, see if that guy's banged out 70s and everyone's, oh my God, this guy's a wonder kid. And he's going to go to the moon and all the rest of it. Don't get me wrong, there's maybe a wee bit of time for reassessment there. But typically speaking, I'll always follow through on what plan A was. The plan was to sell the guy after two games. It's really hard to sell him now because he's worth a lot of money and he's looking great. But that's the exact motivation people have to buy him. Yeah. And without that motivation to buy him, the price isn't as high as that. I can't sell him for that price. So it's one of these kind of, you know, you can't, you, the, yeah, you either do it or you don't kind of thing, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, that's fair enough. I don't know if that was kind of all over the place, but I think you... No, no, I, 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 <laughs> I I'm, 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 I'm following with you. I'm, I'm following on. I'm just, I'm just uh, like, it's it. I just, I guess, again, it, it comes down to that whole, the more you know kind of thing. Like, if it wasn't for SoRare Data, I wouldn't have found, I, I probably wouldn't have actually stayed on SoRare if it wasn't for SoRare Data. It's just made life a million times easier. Um, but it, it's hard when you know that it exists to be in the mindset of, okay, this guy might be cheap because people just can't find him unless they're, you know, on so rare data, which is a, a much smaller group of people. But even just looking at the the few that I picked up there, I, I think, and this is where I guess like, I would love to have that chat with you right now about finding or, be, you know, becoming a more serious manager. Because I think the three guys I picked up here, Hotich is banging price, one ETH. I think that's phenomenal for a, a great player and and even you know like maybe maybe i'd do a bit of research to try and find out why he was perhaps out of form in you know back end of last season um and then jonathan bamba obviously Lille, a bit of a mid-table team they might even lose jonathan david and yilmaz is getting way old like he might become a star man or he might become a forgotten fruit but he's another guy that's like 50 points as a bare minimum and then if he does get a decisive even more and again he's under an ETH, I find him to be great value for that pro side. I like I like Bamba a lot. I think he's um I think he's great. To be honest with you, I'm surprised he's as cheap as that. Um so I think the Coney transfer, uh, Jonathan the Coney just left Leo for yeah. Fiorentina. I think that's a big move because they've always been kind of fighting for the same spot yeah. in the team, unfortunately. And then this last guy now, he's none none on the market, but he's trading like Point three ether his last trade this lucas jansen guy oh, he's another wow, guy yeah. that's just like he's yeah i like him yeah he's and so i i i guess i don't know if it's just the way i i look at it and if it's i, I you know there's no wrong way unless you just never ever win rewards i suppose and then, then it's wrong but i like guys like this because i get way more value for money than going buying kochu for twenty thousand or mbappe for a hundred thousand <laughs> you know what i mean I'm with you, yeah. And again, your boy Jansen there kind of falls a little bit into that De Dennis Suarez mode where, you know, he has a forwards, so he doesn't need his goals and assists to get those big greens, but yeah. those they're the weeks you're targeting, you know? So I, I, I quite often say on streams when we get to this point where everything is on, like JK, MLS, all the leagues are on, is that with the gallery my size, and you, you'll get to this frame of mind shortly as well, I'm sure, you have a winning team in your gallery right now. You have a team that will win, can yep. win. Yeah, your job is to is to put it together and find it. Unfortunately, well, that's the hard bit. It's fu it's funny you, know. you say that because I I just went I did a kind of like a thought experiment, um, just in a couple of days ago as to what would have my top five been this past game week, and I would have hit first in all star rare if I picked the right five. So I've got podium winning teams in my gallery, and it. it is about picking the right players at the right time in the right division, and that's where I struggle and i'm struggling to adapt because uh one uh i can't remember who it was i was watching someone listen to one podcast about go for your best division first and then work your way down so now that i'm part of like the rare pro and the under 23 rare pro but okay i have to pick my players my teams for their first but i'm not entirely confident in those because i don't know if the players i have are good enough in the first place as i say i, I bought the uh Clayton Itaitinga just be like he, he's he's all right you know but he doesn't have an L40 he has a random DNP for a mysterious illness and was on the bench the next game the team he plays for isn't insane he doesn't get many decisives and so I don't even have that much faith in him myself to then put 
Maguire, Saliba and um, Muric into that under-23s team, that's where I'm now kind of at that sticking point of like, okay, where do I actually put these players that's going to give me the best chance? Yeah, and that's it. That, that's tough. But I think, um, see, so again, what, what you'll start to realise as you're doing that is you will, so you'll make your U23 Pro, you'll make your Global Rare Pro, and then you'll be dictated upon by goalkeepers, of course, what else you can do. Yeah. But there is this natural kind of human urge to do as much and have as many rolls of the dice as possible. Now, I did a, a video making my lineup builder for this game week that I was very much looking forward to for ages, but I didn't even get a chance to release it because the other thing I did last night with the studio, as I was telling you about, yep. whatever. But basically, um, I, built, I built out, let's say, 16 teams across all of the divisions, limited, rare, rare pro, and super rare. And then what I did is I deleted two teams I deleted the two weakest teams, and then that's and then now as a result, my 14, 13 teams feel much better in. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of pressure on right. Okay, I'm in All Star Pro and I'm in All Star. Eh, I'm in Under 23 Pro, but I also need to get the rares out, and I also need to get a challenger team and a champion team. You know, like I say, if you've got one winning team in your your gallery, in theory. If you were that confident in it, you only really need to submit one team. You know the team that's going to do yeah. something. And the teams that let you down, is it really much of a surprise? It probably isn't, you know. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't, I would always focus on like, you know, I'd, like for this week, for example, in a lot of weeks, I put U23s in All-Star. I put Champion Guy. I put anyone in All-Star. It's always like my, fa I always do my best. All-Star Pro, I pick the five best guys, regardless of anything that I possibly can. Sometimes I welch on that a little bit. I think, you know, it's only human nature. But if you look at my pro team for this week, actually, I think you've got that up. I, I think I yeah. did it this week. I'm losing my mind. Yeah. But that whole team except for Giacomakis and Nubel, so the, the three in the middle are U23. So that's Koki Machida, Super Rare, Florian Wurtz and Sofian Diop. I think it may be a wee bit further up um, yeah. on the page, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, like there you go, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I think you went back. No, it's, it's, it's yeah, I'm, I'm, back. Oh, I'm on there now, yeah. Giacomakis, oh, Diop, sorry. Wurtz, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So those three guys in the middle are all U23 and there'll be a lot of people shouting at the screen going, why did you not play them at U23? But... No one else will have them in global, is my kind of thing. And number one, that is my five best guys on fixtures and form. And so, so in, interesting, like some interesting stuff from me there. So I prioritised All Star last because I could just put any one I've got left there rather than first. Is it is there a easier chance to win in All Star than in a specific targeted league? Well, All Star always has the biggest prize pool because it has like everything goes in it. Whereas the regions, obviously, you can only win champion cards and champion Asia and Asia, etc. So it's always get the actual head count, biggest payout, okay. and the tiers I find are much are much more uh, reflective of standard. So, like for example, I got that Sophie and Diop last weekend as a tier one r rare reward. Yeah, I watched your video getting him. Yeah, he was very happy. In fact, <laughs> Thank you. I was, I was buzzing. A tier one rare in any of the regions, there's a good chance I wouldn't get a guy of that level. You know, yeah. I'd get a tier one Asia card or a tier one MLS card. Even a tier one champion card might not be as good as that. He's probably a star champion prize, if that makes sense. Yeah. But because gotcha. the global pool has to include the Asian cards, it has to include the MLS and star. Some of those European guys that would be in star in the region end up being in global in the tier one. Yeah, that, that's. That, that's certainly going to influence my choice making at the next uh, next game week. The other thing that came from that is like why like I've I've had a lot of people like more than I ever thought would it would be like we're talking like maybe 50, 60, 70 people like really like get on my case for using under 23s outside of the under 23 divisions. I have yeah. more under 23s than I have divisions to play them in. So it's like my choices are I either don't play them, which is also ludicrous if I can play them somewhere else or play them somewhere else. Why do people have such a fascination of not it being almost unacceptable to play a U23 in an, a non-under 23s division? So the, the jeopardy with All-Star that people don't like is that you could win. Like if your gallery is all U23, for example, mainly European, you winning a Star Asia card doesn't really fit the profile of your current club and a lot of people just find that a deterrent and don't want to even even though you can sell the thing that's going to be worth something yeah. to somebody 
You know, um, a lot of people find that as a deterrent. People only, and again, it's very good logic behind it. They only want to enter competitions for cars they want to win. And because they write off the rural territories as I don't want to win them, they put All Star to the back of the queue, and then they'll go right. Well, I want to win U twenty threes, so I'll put my U twenty threes there. Right, I want to win champion, so I'll put my champion there. That kind of thing. Um, but for Florian Wirtz, he's a great example of why you don't need to play U twenty threes anywhere if you've got that level of guy. It's just nice that he's U twenty three. It's not what he's just good about him what's good about him is he's a killer you know yeah. Um, <laughs> you know so it's just nice that he's u23 it's nice that he's a champion card but at the end of the day he's a midfielder he's my best midfielder who will score over 70 points most likely so i have to put him with my best striker i have to put him with my best goalkeeper i don't want to put him with my best u23 striker because he might not be as good as my best striker this week you know yeah yeah no, that's that's, that's definitely uh that's interesting something i, I will uh You'll definitely win more as a result with that mindset because then what happens is like when you pick your best when you pick your best teams, especially in global, without any of that kind of bias, you get a lot of differentials. And then because, like you said, a lot of people enter the globals last. Again, even though when you look at the headcount, how many people are in the division, it's not really reflective on the how fierce the competition actually yeah, gotcha. is. My team's probably on paper one of the strongest teams in that division. I would hazard a guess that on L fives or whatever, you know. Um because other people would rather put works than U23 Pro. You know, the breakdown yeah. of that will be huge. Same with the D-Up, same can with the Machida. You, you, you can't see that outside of in the lineup building thing, can you, where it tells you like yeah. the differential? Yeah, that's a shame. I think, you know, I think so rare offer it, uh, so rare data when you go to Game Week Center and then Impact Players. So then that tells you, yeah, it does. So you can go to Impact Players and then you can go to Regions and Positions and it will show you like how many cards have been selected percentage wise. So if we, this is actually quite good to do, see whatever it brings up. Now, works is tricky because he does have a midfielder and a forward card. So um, it's a position filter as well. Oh, okay. So I've done, so I've done midfield to see if we can see works pop up. But it will tell you how many rares and how many supers are in this game week in that division. Get him all star rare pro, didn't you? I went to under 23 pro. Yeah, but you'll see mine in, in the thing, mate. It's such a big list. I don't think you can actually search to find a guy and pull up his individual. But again, you. If you were to scratch around and really find where uh, Wurtz is exactly, you will find the majority of them are U23 and Champion. He's not actually uh, showing up, funnily enough. Oh, sorry, have you got him in under 23? Yeah. So Impact players, I think maybe the basis of this is, yeah, so there's 1% of Mbappe's in this division. Oh, Wurtz is right at the top, sorry, yeah. So Wurtz, 27 of his forward cards and two of his super rares are in U23 Pro this game week. That's Florian Wurtz's forward card. His midfielder card, and that was the second most picked player in as a forward. Yeah. So his forward card is the second most picked. So if he bangs in ninety, that's you know going to go around a lot of people. Yeah. Or a lot more than it will in um, global, for example. And the midfielder, he's not actually. I'm not seeing him popping up to be honest with you for the midfielder. So the forward card seems to be the preference for you, twenty three pro. Um. And, so you uh, you have him in all star rare pro though, don't you? Yeah, mine's is an all-star. Yeah. So I want to, I wanted to try and fight our there he is. So there's eight uh, rares and only three super rares in all-star rare pro. That that gives you like a massive advantage, doesn't it? Because there's so many players above him that so many people have that if he has a cracking week, it just sets you. Yep, it's only me and ten other people that are going to be picking in that one hundred. Yeah. You know. Again, those me and those other, oh, I'm one of those 10 people, I suppose. Me and yeah. those other nine people, we're all in the same mindset. You know, we've all went, works as our best midfielder. He goes in this team. Because yeah, the star rare payout is up to 20 spaces this game week in All Star. You know? Yeah, yeah that's really good. I finished 18th last week and won that D op. I was raging when I seen that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you know, that's double any other pro league prize pool for for stars you know and if you just want to be getting and again when you win a star rare see if it is like a Cecenia who's like the Messi of a, the Asian region yeah. or you know Carlos Hill in America if you are happy to keep that card playing that again in global is brilliant yeah and you know keep, even if you yeah. don't have Asian cards you know that then maybe you win a Cecenia you put him then with your super rare brews that's in a really strong foundation of a pro team that you can just you know that's the pro you team just keep that farming the rewards yeah absolutely yeah, and it it's, works, works out well like that. It's all very fascinating, very fascinating. Unfortunately, I've got. A, I know you're. You've got some to do in an hour or so, haven't you? And I've got to get my FIFA stuff done. I could sit here and talk to you all day about so rare. Same. 
Um, it's fun, man. I really appreciate it. No, yes, yeah, it's, it's great stuff. And guys, if you don't know, this is Quinny. Obviously, I showed you his gallery. Um, I will tweet out when I put this video live. I will kind of try and edit this down and get the important parts in there, all his socials and stuff. But just search. It's Quinny3009. Is that right? 3001. Any 3001. social media. Big one. Yeah, there you yeah. go. So Quinny3001. Far more knowledgeable than I on So Rare. Has way more content out there that would be helpful for you guys as well. So go uh, give him a check out. And uh, yeah, we. I mean... I don't, you do uh, you do podcasts a lot, don't you? Uh, uh, the actual pod, I ran up. You can find it on podcast places. It's called the So Rare Procast. I've only did fifteen episodes so far, but that's uh, it's not really a beginner's podcast. It is more like if you know once you've got a team and it's just some interesting details. And the first like five episodes is just me solo piloting. I profile some clubs and whatever. Anyway, I'm telling you more about this than I should, but <laughs> it's uh, there's fifteen episodes of it. It's really good content. It's not really aged out. A lot of it's still relevant. Um, and that might come back, but it's mainly YouTube content. Sorry, it's a punchline. Perfect. <laughs> oh, all good. And so, uh, yeah, we, we should definitely do this more often and maybe get a few of the other FIFA boys involved as soon. well. Yeah, that'd be great. Nice one. Well, take care, man. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, you too, Enjoy man. Thanks for chatting. FIFA. No, I appreciate all the uh, all the knowledge and and whatnot, man. And hopefully, hopefully, I'll be uh, catching up your gallery size soon and yeah, going head Always. to head with you in the in the big divisions. Let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.